Hello friends and welcome to my channel. My name is Katya and this time I want to continue my Iron Age finished dress project. Well, you could say that I already have one dress and it's the one that I'm wearing. But everyone that knows something about Finnish Iron Age dress thinks about those peplos dresses, those rectangular garments that were fastened by the brooches on each shoulder. So I want to have one of those as well. I managed to find this wool. This is from, I think, Viking Age store. And it's really nice. It's 2 by 2 twill and it's thick but not too thick. And I think this will work just fine. But it's very dull color. And Iron Age people love their colors. And I have already red dress and blue apron. This just doesn't fit with the rest of the outfit. And I need to dye it. Well, there is quite a lot of fabric, as you can see, so the problem is that in order to get a really strong color, I have to do it at high temperatures, and that means that I have to be able to use my stove. I went and bought a big pot that I hope it's big enough. This is 20 liters, and this fabric fits in, and there's even some room for me to stir it. The dye that I bought says that we don't recommend dyeing anything if it's more than 200 grams. Well, this is over 600 grams, so I'm taking a risk here. About the dye, I have this kind of dye. I have two colors. I have dark brown and I have red. And I hope that if I combine these, I'll get some nice reddish brown. Also, I need some salt. I think just the normal table salt would do, but I bought this uh, dyeing salt. I have to start by washing it, and then I have to lift the temperature up to near boiling very, very slowly, because I don't want to felt this completely. But the first thing to do is to change my clothing into something more appropriate. I don't want to dye this dress. So, see you soon in the kitchen. Here we are in the kitchen, and here's my fabric. I washed it, it's still wet. I have a kettle, a thermometer that I clip to the side of the kettle. I hope it stays there. If it doesn't, I have to figure out something else. I have another pot that I have used for dyeing before, so this is good for making the dye solution. I have an old spoon that is just for dyeing, that's why it says Vargas in here. I have some measurement cups to measure the water. And I have my dice. So, I think we are ready to start. Let's see how this looks like. So the die comes in little pouches like this. And here there are instructions. I think it's hot enough, so let's add the die. Got the vinegar. Well, I'm adding it now. This can't be too late. Okay, now the temperature is at 82 degrees. So now I just have to keep it there 
for 40 minutes. Is it promising? I don't know. I've done it for 16 minutes. There is 24 minutes to go. But if I stop stirring the kettle, it starts heating up at the bottom and it starts to boil. I just keep stirring in this and I hope I don't spray this hot liquid on my face. Now it has been in the kettle for about 40 minutes, so it should be ready. Now I have to just cool it down really slowly and then rinse it in hot water. Okay, the fabric is dry now and it looks just perfect. It shrank a bit, like um, perhaps 14 centimeters in each direction, but it's not too felted. In order to make the table woven edges, I have to unravel at least like 4 centimeters from each end and it will take a long time. It's felted, but I can still unravel it, but the edge is long, there are two of them and it will take a lot of time. I have to use a needle to take out one thread here and then go along the whole edge to separate the yarn and it's, it's low. But I think it's worth it. I decided last night that when I'm going to wear this... Second. I'm going to fold the front edge like this, but I'm not going to fold the back edge because the buckles pull the back edge down here and if I fold the back edge, the peplos look shorter in the back. And uh, This is actually something that was often done, so it's not historically incorrect. So now it's just unraveling and more unraveling and it take a few days for me to get all these edges unraveled. Then I'll uh, finish them by weaving. But yeah, this is going to look awesome when it's done. Now I have finished all these, these two edges, one edge has been turned to the other and one to the other side. This is because I'm going to wear it like this and because this is folded down, I don't want this edge showing at the back, I don't care. Now I need to weave these. And for that I need to measure the length of this edge and it's about 140 so we'll add a bit extra on 1, 150 times 2, 300 plus some extra, 220. Okay if I make 3 meters and 20 centimeters long warp. I can weave both edges to the same warp and I don't have to do it twice. I need some spare yarn to measure the 3 meters like this. If you'll be wondering what is this, this is something I made. It's a warping frame. It's basically just those kind of um, wooden frames that the artists use to stretch their canvases. I bought one of them and nailed or screwed all the corners so that they actually stay closed 
and added these wooden bags. And I can now wrap my warp around these as long as it isn't too long. So if I can start here, I can go here, 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 around this and here. I might add more pegs here if I want. I have screwed some holes but I didn't have enough pegs to add more. But anyway, now I have this yarn that I measured. I have my loop here and now I can measure from here and let's see. And here and here and here. That will be okay. I crisscrossed the yarns here and this is to prevent any tangles from forming. I did the same at the bottom and it really helps to keep everything in order. Like so. Tie these together like so. Now it's time to add the tablets. They go to this part of the of the warp. Okay, I was just about to start weaving and I realized that I read the tablets wrong and I basically counted the number of yarns I need wrong. Well, the good thing is that I have too many yarns because I forgot that the middle tablets are supposed to have only two yarns each and I've threaded four yarns for each tablet. So because I've already moved the tablets to this end, I have to move them back to the other end, take out the wrong yarns and re-thread the right yarns and then go back. At this point I had lunch and coffee and now I have energy to do the basically same thing all over again that I once did. Mm -hmm. 